The Asian Pacific Swing rolls on as the city of Hanoi welcomes Formula One to town for the inaugural Vietnam Grand Prix and round number three of the 2020 World Championship. The teams and the drivers took the opportunity to catch all the sights and sounds of the Vietnamese capital as well as hosting a plethora of public relation events to interact with their new group of fans. Also making headlines heading into the race weekend is Daniel Hate's astonishing amount of momentum that he has picked up after winning in both Australia and Bahrain. When asked about it during a media news conference last Wednesday, the Bengal F1 racing team owner said that he's fortunate that things are going his way so far. He also reiterated that in addition to Monaco, there will be other tracks that he thinks other teams may benefit from. And Daniel was brought back down to earth last Thursday when his car had a brake system issue that caused him to miss the first five and a half minutes of free practice one. He was able to complete a hands full of the practice programs despite the setback and finished in his usual spot of number one at the end of the session with a time of 141.1. Daniel Ricardo in the Renault and Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes surprisingly finished with identical best lap times of a 143.8 four thousandths of a second behind Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari. Nine tenths of a second covered position six through ten bookended by the young British driver Lando Norris and the Spaniard Carlos Sainz in the two McLarens. The teams continued to dial in the setups during free practice two later in the day as well as learning the track layout breaking points and apexes. And after another 45 minutes of track time, Daniel Haidt led the way yet again with a time of 141.6. Daniel Ricardo once again flexed the Renault muscle by posting the third best time and also the Russian Danny Kvyat in the Alpha Tauri, the Dane Kevin Magnussen in the Haas and the Italian Antonio Giovinazzi in the Alfa Romeo set impressive lap times as well to finish in the top 15. But the margin between the top three came down quite a bit at the end of free practice three on Friday. The second Mercedes driver, Valtteri Bautas, was a little less than a quarter of a second off the top spot. And Max Verstappen in the Red Bull was a further eight tenths back. Ricardo continued his consistency with another top five performance and Pierre Gasly in the second Alpha Tauri car joined his Russian teammate in the top 15. With Saturday's qualifying ahead of us, three big questions are on everyone's mind. Who will have the honor of being the very first lap record holder on this street circuit? Will we have a different race winner this weekend? Can anyone slow down Daniel Haidt and Bengal F1 Racing's momentum? What's up everyone, Chicago Man 2008 here, and welcome back to my Formula 1 2020 My Team Career Mode, episode number 3 today, for the inaugural Vietnam Grand Prix in season 1. If you did miss the previous episode, then be sure to go check that out before you see this one. But as stated in the intro, we've now got two wins to our name and for Bengal F1 Racing, thanks in part to the medium hard tire strategy that I utilized in those two races. And this is a brand new track that we as an entire F1 brand are going to, so we're coming into this weekend with a fresh clean slate and everyone tried to gather as much data as possible going to the race itself. Unfortunately, the real life Vietnam Grand Prix got cancelled due to COVID, so most of the racing on this particular circuit have maybe been done virtually, and by the looks of it, we may be continuing that trend. But what I can tell you based on the practice laps that I've done off camera, it's got a unique flow to it in terms of some of the certain sections that reminds us of other F1 circuits. And you'll see what I mean once we get into Saturday qualifying and the race on Sunday. But kicking off today's episode here in the HQ, you may have seen that we got confirmation that the minor front downforce upgrade that we purchased back at the start of the series has come through. That is especially big as we continue to get this car aerodynamically ready for Monaco and other tracks that will require a good amount of downforce. So to make sure that both ends of the car will be stable, I'm now going to purchase a minor rear downforce upgrade. So once again, we have four upgrades in development and we're still waiting on a minor and major chassis and a level one gearbox durability. Now it's time to fill in the nine free days with some activities on the timeline before the Grand Prix weekend. And we'll spend a little cash to throw a podium celebration party for our victory in Bahrain. After that, we'll have Mick Schumacher do some simulator training for a couple of days and that will increase his experience by two. 
then we'll spend a little bit more cash to do a two-day sponsor event promotion, and that will increase our team acclaim by 200, and to round it off, we'll earn our cash back, and then some, plus boost our team acclaim by an additional 750 with a four-day vehicle PR filming. And after practice, we now have a little over 900 R&D points. Since our durability, aero, and chassis departments have reached the cap of development, I decided to get a head start on upgrading the powertrain by purchasing a minor engine upgrade. There will be tracks on the calendar that are very high in speed and have long straights. If this one doesn't fail, it will come in after the Chinese Grand Prix. So I'm hoping and praying that we don't get a failure on any of the five upgrades. With all that taken care of, let's head out to the track for Saturday qualifying. Alright then, we'll pick up my run in Q1 on the exit of turn 18 which starts a long S section comprised of this turn, 19, and 20. Sort of similar to the S section in Sector 1 of Japan's Suzuka circuit in a way. Went a little wide there in 20 and that compromised my line into 21. Got an OK apex into 22 as I was following a Haas on its flyer. Off the gas into 23, a little wash of understeer, oh so close to the outside wall. Across the line, and for the first time in this career mode, we don't top a session. It's Hamilton in first, followed by Bottas and then us in third at that point. And at the end of the session, we got bumped down to eighth as Max Verstappen finishes Q1 in third. Well done to Daniel Ricciardo for another solid performance as he has been showing consistency with his finishes and for dragging the Renault up that high. Also, good job to the two Alpha Tower drivers, Daniel Kvyat and Pierre Gasly for making it into Q2, and for the first time in his career, Mick Schumacher will be joining us in the next session as he outqualified Roman Grosjean by 7 one hundredths of a second. And as usual, we'll attempt to get into Q3 on the mediums. We'll now pick up my run coming down the long back straight, topping out at 205 miles an hour into the heavy braking zone of the turn 11 hairpin. Almost downshifted to first gear, but still had good traction through 12 as I climbed back up the gears toward the 90 degree right hander of 13. Back down to second gear again and then heading towards the quick S's of 14, 15, 16, staying right at 17, then the sweeping turns of 18 and 19, followed by 20. A much better line into 21 right there, and also a much better apex into turn 22. Sensing a better lap here as I again let off the throttle to let the car rotate through 23, a little more room to spare across the line and I set the fastest time of the session at that point with a 140.245. Then near session's end, Max Verstappen goes fastest with a 140.093, and then right at the last second, Valtteri Bottas tops the leaderboard with a sub-140 lap. Also, kudos to both Carlos Sainz and Sergio Perez for an outstanding top 5 session finish there, separated by 7 thousandths of a second. And also, Hamilton squeaked by into the top 10 shootout on the mediums, beating Albon by almost 5 hundredths. Unfortunately, Schumacher got knocked out, but still, a job well done for him to make it into Q2, and he'll have his best starting position so far this season of 16th. So far, Bottas is the current lap record holder with a 139.350. We'll see if any of us can go faster than that as we determine the final 10 grit slots. And once again, I'll have three fresh sets of soft tires to work with in Q3. Picking up my run through the flat-out turn 10 with DRS open and topping out at 206 miles an hour. Hard on the brakes into turn 11, but this time I took more curb at the apex, and that unsettled my car at corner exit. Upshifted there early into third gear out of 12, and setting up for the 90 degree turn 13 as I set a purple sector 2 split. Here's the fast S section again of 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. I took them with much more confidence, but ended up going wide and missing the apex at turn 19, but got back on the preferred line into 20, and barely missed hitting the wall into 21. Sensing another good lap here coming off of 22, carrying a bit more speed into the final turn, and again flirting with the wall across the line, and I set the best time of the weekend so far with a 138.958, almost four tenths quicker than Hamilton. I tried to go out for another run, but I left it a little too late, but to my surprise, my time was good enough for my third pole position in a row 
and also to virtually set the first lap record on this circuit. Wow, that's all I gotta say about my qualifying performance here. The S section in Sector 3 comes at you at a blink of an eye. If you're not thinking two to three corners ahead and your steering inputs are not precise, it's game over right then and there, or a huge amount of time can be lost. So in the end, it's the usual suspects, myself, Hamilton, Bottas, Verstappen, Leclerc, and Vettel on the first three rows. This is going to be a challenging but interesting track to race on, so let's head into Sunday and see how we do. The Formula One circus has arrived in Southeast Asia once more as we usher in a new era and get ready to go racing here in Vietnam. A lap of Hanoi circuit then, 3.4 miles around the Vietnamese capital. A number of the 23 corners take their inspiration from other great circuits, hopefully creating plenty of passing opportunities. And what would any Grand Prix weekend be without the one and only Anthony Davidson? Alongside me as always, to talk you through the action. Well, it was a really impressive lap in qualifying to get pole position, but are they going to be able to hold on to the lead into the first corner with so many quick starters around them? Besides that, of course, any kind of turn one incident could completely turn the race on its head. Let's keep our fingers crossed everyone can get through in one piece. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. The rookie lines up on pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Verstappen, Charles Leclerc, and Vettel, Perez, Sainz, Ricardo, and Alexander Albon, Norris, Stroll, Pierre Gasly, and Ocon, Kvyat, Schumacher, Roman Grosjean, and Kimi Raikkonen. Magnussen, Russell, Giovinazzi, and Nicholas Latifi. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. All right then, here we are on the grid in our usual pole position. And taking a look at the race strategy, they are recommending that we do a two-stop from the mediums that we're going to start on to either two sets of softs or do a soft medium plan. But I'm going to go with what has gotten me the win in Australia and Bahrain, and that is a bold one-stop from the mediums onto the hards. Since Lewis Hamilton is also starting on the mediums, Mercedes could try and copy the strategy that we're going to employ, use one of the two strategies on screen, or go with something completely different. To be honest with you guys, I literally have no idea of the tire wear rate on this circuit as this is my very first race. Not only that, we could also be looking at changeable weather conditions towards the end, even though it is saying that it should be a dry race throughout. So we'll just need to stay alert and be ready in case if the rain does come down. So let's rev up to five red lights for the inaugural Vietnam Grand Prix with myself on pole for the third time, Hamilton once again in second, and Schumacher starting at his grid best of 16th. Lights are out and we are underway, and once again, it's another good launch for me off the starting line, with ERS engaged and Rich Mix for the short sprint to turn one. And whoa! I get pushed off the racing line by Verstappen at the apex, and yet somehow I held it together and maintained the lead. That was a very ballsy move by the Dutchman to set it up the inside there. We'll look at a replay of that contact a little later as there is action behind us three rows of two by two. Sergio Perez trying to get around Lewis Hamilton, the two Ferraris jockeying for position, Norris getting ahead of I believe Ricardo in the backdrop, and as we approach the second carousel section of turns six through nine, they're still going at it, and hello! The Alpha Tauri of Pierre Gasly is now in the mix. This is turning out to be a great fight in the mid-half of the top 10. Perez and Hamilton are still side by side, and the Clark gets past his teammate Vettel heading down the long back straight. This is where we're going to see the majority of the overtakes happening in this race. Let's take a look at the start again with an onboard view from Verstappen's car. He gets an incredible start there, already past Bottas and Hamilton before turn 1, and... There's where it all started. He just didn't apply enough brake pressure to slow down quick enough, and I was already at the necessary speed to take the corner under the heavy fuel load. Instead of turning to the left to avoid contact with me, as you see on this freeze frame, he has his steering wheel pointed to the right, which causes his car to hop the curb and push me wide off the racing line. Then as I came back onto the track, I gave Verstappen a little scare by almost making contact with my rear left tire to his front right, 
as if to show my disapproval of that move he made. Back to live action as Gasly is looking to make a move on Vettel off of turn 10 as he gets squeezed towards the inside wall there. Gasly outbreaks the German and goes for a dive bomb on Leclerc into the turn 11 hairpin. Is he going to make the move stick? Not quite as Leclerc has the better traction but what an outstanding effort there by the Frenchman for that double overtake attempt. Checking in now on my teammate Mick Schumacher and at the moment he is holding station in his starting position of 16th with Esteban Ocon in the Renault in front of him and I believe Roman Grosjean in the Haas behind. On to lap 3 now and here comes Verstappen with DRS now activated up my inside. Has a look but thinks better of it going into the heavy braking zone of turn 11. Tries to out traction me but I got the better of it and maintain the lead. As we move one lap later, same part of the track, Bottas is closing in on Verstappen through the flat out turn 10. Bottas opens up DRS, still gaining and gaining through the kink and gets the move done before slamming on the brakes. And Verstappen I think got a little flustered there as the second silver arrow bolts away at the exit. A little farther back now and Antonio Giovinazzi in the Alfa Romeo is attempting to get by Schumacher. Schumacher comes back a little as they're now side by side into turn 11 but Giovinazzi gets better traction off the exit and that puts my teammate down to 18th after previously being overtaken by Grosjean in the Haas. Fast forwarding now to the end of lap 7 on to 8 and Valtteri Bottas is the first of the soft tire runners to come in. This is right at about the time the pit window starts to open for the teams that are implementing or are forced onto the two stop strategy. And we'll see if the attempt by Mercedes at trying to undercut Verstappen will pay off. It looks like the call will be a set of mediums for Bottas. Now the question becomes, how fast can the Finn get through the traffic, or how much time can he gain on Verstappen if the undercut is successful? One lap later and Verstappen makes his way into the pit lane to try and cover off the Mercedes' attempt to use Bottas to undercut him. The gap was around one second at the time the second silver arrow came in, so this will need to be a quick and efficient stop for the Red Bull crew, and they are hoping that Max doesn't get held up in traffic too much. It's another set of the red wall soft tires going on, so they are going to save their mediums for the final stint, while Mercedes can put Bottas on whatever compound they want because they've already met the dry tire regulation. Since I didn't show this during qualifying, let's ride on board for a full lap around the Hanoi circuit. Charge is high. Let's use that overtake button more. We'll now fast forward to lap 13 and it's finally time for us to come in for our one and only stop this race onto the white wall hard tires. The gap to Hamilton was around 12 and a half seconds so it all comes down to my pit crew and I'm hoping that they will deliver like they did the last two times. Also the skies have begun to darken so could there be a possibility of rain coming our way? We'll see when we cross the bridge. Mercedes also have called Hamilton into the pits as well. I think we both hit the same amount of tire wear on the opening stint or they're trying to cover me off from attempting an overcut on him. We go on to the hard compound, an OK stop of 2.6 seconds and Hamilton is on the softs. So he's going to have a massive tire advantage on me in terms of speed and grip. However the softs will wear out quicker than my hards 
so I'll just need to survive a few laps until a tire wear kicks in on his car. As we cycle back onto the track, I manage to stay into the lead, and Hamilton is off the top 5 leaderboard behind Sebastian Vettel! The Mercedes must have had a slow pit stop or something. As we fast forward to lap 15, we get this message from Jeff, our race engineer. We're expecting rain in around 10 to 15 minutes. And with that call, it's time for me to get the hammer down and push like an absolute stabbed rat. Moving ahead with 11 laps to go in the Grand Prix, Verstappen is in for his second stop to go onto the mediums, and my gap to Hamilton is a little over 7 seconds. It looks like I did survive the first few laps at the beginning of my second stint, as the tire wear is now in full effect on the lead Mercedes. So at this stage, I decided to preserve the extra fuel that I still have, and keep my ERS battery at a reasonable level in case the gap did come down to 5 seconds or under. On to lap 21 now with 8 laps left, Hamilton did make his second stop onto another set of soft tires, and the gap at this stage had increased over 20 seconds. Again with rain potentially coming in the next few minutes, the pace was relatively good even though the track temperature has probably dropped a few degrees. And with Hamilton on fresh softs, I was anticipating him to eat away at my gap at a rate of about maybe 1 up to 2.5 seconds a lap to secure the bonus point for the fastest lap. And the rain did start to fall on lap 23, even though you can't see it on screen due to the current settings I'm using, believe me, it did start at this point as light sprinkles. The gap to Lewis was holding station at around 20 seconds at this stage. And also, the track temperature has dropped considerably since the cloud cover rolled in as I missed the apex of the Turn 11 hairpin. I was thinking that I may have made the wrong strategy choice and should have converted onto a two-stop strategy like everyone else did. But there's no turning back now. I'm fully committed to making this one stop work, and hoping that the rain doesn't fall harder. Fast forwarding to the final lap of the race, Hamilton has brought the gap down to under 14 seconds, and the rain has indeed picked up in intensity as you can see the droplets on the camera lens. I'm now on full rich mix as there's no point in saving the fuel anymore. Through the last few corners, under damp conditions on the dry tires, we will come home to win the Vietnam Grand Prix, our third win in a row. Oh, how sweet is this moment! Great drive! We did it! Good job! Well, they've done a brilliant job, I must say, under some intense pressure to take a well-earned victory here at the Vietnam Grand Prix. Talk to me, Ant. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. The faces on our top three look so incredibly happy as they make their way up to the podium. A much-deserved victory and a brilliant performance from them all. All I have to say after that one is just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Even though the cloud cover dropped the track temperature at about the time I made my one and only stop, the rain coming down near the end making it a little challenging around the fast corners, and Hamilton making a late charge to close the gap to under 15 seconds, the plan was executed to perfection for the third win in a row this season. Hamilton did indeed snag the bonus point for the fastest lap, so my run of having a perfect point total of 572 is now out the window. Looking at the other finishers, both Red Bulls got decent amount of points with Verstappen getting 15 and his teammate Albon with 6. Also, good job to both Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris in the McLaren for finishing 8th and 10th respectively. As far as Schumacher's performance this race, even though he finished lower than his qualifying position, I still have hope for him that he'll get comfortable with the car and eventually get up in the points. And after this race, I increased my lead in the Drivers' Championship to 28 points over Lewis Hamilton, Verstappen is now 1 point behind Leclerc and 6 points above Vettel to make it a Ferrari sandwich. Things are really tight down below in positions 7 through 13 with only a 10 point spread. Finally in the constructors with both Hamilton and Bottas scoring points 34 to my 25, Mercedes increased their lead over us to now 11 points 
and we have a 12-point cushion over Ferrari in third. Racing Point jumps ahead of Renault by one point, and Alfa Romeo climbs to eight in the standings, four points over Alfa Tauri. So that's going to do it for this episode, and if you enjoyed it, then please smash that like button, turn on the notification bell, and also subscribe so that you don't miss any new videos coming out. This is Chicago Man 2008. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you in Shanghai, China.